It's time for City Beat, your source for all the latest news on the city of Thompson. Only on 1029 CHTF, your radio station. Good morning. This is City Beat. I'm Monica Gould, and joining me in studio is Deputy Mayor Kathy Valentino. Thank you for coming in. Thanks for having me. Uh, if you have a question you'd like to ask Deputy Mayor Valentino, <laughs> she'll try her best. She's battling a bit of a cold right now, but you can give us a call at 677-8181. To kick things off, what's been happening around the city? Well, there's always lots going on around our city. It's always busy around here. So a couple things going on that's been going on this last week is um, Mun Cup wrapped up down at the TRCC. They had 17 teams, so that was a busy weekend. And this coming weekend down at the TRCC will be the North Stars' end of their 31st season. They have their last two home games this weekend, Saturday at 7.30 and Sunday at 1.30 against Interlake. The city's also preparing for Winterfest. You can start to see all the advertising and some of the activity going on down at TRCC in the fields. And the, the other thing that's starting to happen around town is uh, the enumerators are out for the election. Mm -hmm. So please take the time to answer your door to them and answer the questions because it's important that uh, we get everybody enumerated so that the provincial election is a, su a success come this spring. For sure, it's coming up April 19th. Um, now, uh, I'm curious, you've been deputy mayor for a few months now and uh, we've never had a chance to really uh, speak together. So I'm wondering, uh, how has this new role been for you? How has it been different from being uh, just a counselor? I don't wanna say just a counselor because being a counselor is still pretty important, but you know, how has the two roles, roles been different? Well, I like the just a counselor <laughs> thing, but uh, it's, it's good. It's, it really gives you an opportunity to um, get out a little bit more into the community. You take part in, a, um, obviously, Mayor Fenske does it, as much of the role as he can, but um, if he's unable to do any roles, then you're called upon to do a lot of things in the community. That might mean bring greetings at events, serve openings, or um, chair certain meetings. So you really have the opportunity to learn a lot more, I think, um, and to be a lot more present with uh, things that are happening in the now in the city, I find. Mm -hmm, for sure, and even, for example, this week you had to chair the meeting, you're here at City yeah. Beat, so <laughs> unfortunately not the greatest week, but as you're battling a cold, but uh, you're, you're making it work. You've been doing a good job so far. Thanks. Uh, now, as I mentioned on Tuesday, there was a city meeting, um, city council meeting, and council passed a resolution approving the purchase of security cameras for the TRCC and the Norplex pool. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the decision to buy these cameras? Uh, have there been problems at city facilities? Well, obviously, uh, our public safety is uh, always our number one concern. And um, because of the size now of TRCC and, and how big it is and a lot more activity, uh, there, it's not that there is now some activity that's going on. I think there's always been some kind of activity somewhat. <coughs> um, same with the pool. And I think it just gives a little bit more security for the workers and for the public using both of these facilities because they are used a lot. Um, in the summer with the skateboard park being there. It makes that area of the of the city a lot busier also. So the security cameras have been something we've been talking about for a while and uh, we're happy that the resolution did go forward and those will be installed and uh, it'll be a good thing for everybody that's using these uh, city facilities. Mm -hmm, for sure. Uh, this uh, city meeting was also the first meeting with iPads, uh, these new iPads that you guys uh, approved uh, not too long ago, but it was the first meeting where you guys actually had them. I'm sure it's a bit of a learning curve for some councillors. Yes, we uh, approved the iPads in the 2015 budget. So we had some iPad training last week in one of the evenings, and we're going to transition um, council into using them. So you would have noticed at council on Tuesday night that we still used paper and iPads, and we will do that again for another meeting, and then hopefully the meeting after, we won't have our paper packages, we'll be on the iPads, and there'll be two screens in the city council chambers that will follow the agenda for those, for the public that shows up. It will communicate some of the difference in the agenda packages and how they'll be produced and stuff to the public that comes and picks them up. Okay, so then also even uh, the public, uh, you know, you, usually, guys, you, usually you guys would have a stack around, so even the public uh, will now be able to just access it through there, right? They won't be able to get the physical copy? Yeah, I think that we're still kind of working that out. Okay. I, I don't think they'll get the entire package. I, from what I understand, they're just going to get the agenda sheet, and then gotcha. everything will show up on the screens. But that's part of the transition. So. Okay. That may change. Right, okay, we'll see as time goes. But yep. 
All right. Well, and it's also at the end of the day, it's the paperless initiative, which is always a good initiative as well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, now, during this uh, city council meeting, you guys also had a little visit from Rudy the Raven, uh, someone who was born and raised in Thompson. How is it seeing this old Thompson friend make a <coughs> comeback? Well, yes, Rudy the Raven came back to the city and uh, came to city council on Tuesday night. So when I was raised and born here, like you said, <laughs> at Winter Carnival, and this would go back to, well, Harold Smith, because his dad was a big uh, finder of uh, Winter Carnival. The Rudy the Raven was like the um, symbol, I guess, of Winter Carnival. And we always had that Rudy the Raven hunt that they've started now, and it just took place on that weekend. And they would post a clue every so many hours at the bulletin board, and then we would all go run around and try and find Rudy the Raven. <laughs> Before social media and Facebook, right? <laughs> Absolutely. We used to read a paper clue. So now that the, I think it's just great, and I was trying to get the, kids and like oh you got to read the clues and they're like what are you talking about but <laughs> it's a good thing and I kudos to them for bringing this back and and the energy they have it's, it's great so yeah. and in addition to that uh, Mayor Dennis Fenske has proclaimed February 26 as Rudy the Raven Day right absolutely so um, the proclamation for Rudy the Raven Day was read out at council and that's just um, a welcoming back Rudy the Raven to the city and for him to being a part of uh, Winterfest festivities this year for sure i'm sure he's happy everyone's <laughs> happy that he's back yeah uh now um the city is once again accepting nominations for the annual volunteer recognition awards is there any specific criteria for this or is the city just looking for those residents who are out there and just involved in the community yeah the uh the, you'll see some posters are, are put up now in the city facilities and i believe it's on our thompson.ca website about the volunteer of the the year award and it it's really for um like any community groups or anybody that you feel within our city who's a very good volunteer. It doesn't have to be uh, group specific. They can just be an individual uh, standing alone on their own or um, or a community group member or uh, like if it was a figure skating or, or whatever. So we really encourage people to nominate those volunteers. It's a very, very hard process to um, recognize a volunteer of the year because as we all know, our city has fantastic volunteers. Um, I say second to none for sure. So it's a it's a great it's a great event to go to when we have the reception. Uh, but please, everybody should take a time to think of somebody that they think might need to be recognized because volunteers put a lot of time into our city. They sure do. And as you <coughs> said, Thompson has this is probably one of the one of the only communities where I've seen such a gathering and of volunteers and they're always right ready to make things happen here. So it's definitely great. And if anyone's listening and they want to nominate someone, as uh, Kathy mentioned, you can just uh, go on the city website and they can get all the nomination forms there. Uh, now, uh, something that's also been happening is the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, the report they came out with uh, recommendations. I know the city has been looking at the recommendations. Uh, how has that been going? Yeah. Um, City Council has had a, a couple of uh, sessions where we've looked through the Truth and Reconciliation and, and we've narrowed down, um, I think we're at five or seven of them that we feel we're close to being ready to adopt from the City of Thompson's point of view. TUAS actually today and tomorrow is uh, doing some Building Bridges Reconciliation workshops, which some of our administration is at today and some of our councillors are attending tomorrow. So as leaders of the Aboriginal Accord, the city of Thompson needs to take a lead in this and, uh, and they need to take an active role and adopt some of these moving forward. So hopefully we'll have some feedback from the, uh, these workshops these next two days and will help us um, kind of resolve where we're at and which ones we want to bring forward from the city of Thompson. Mm -hmm. For sure, it'll be interesting to see uh, what, yeah, when, what ends up coming out from that. Um, and uh, sort of winding down, as you mentioned, Winterfest is coming up. Uh, are there any specific details that you wanted to share about that? Yeah, Winterfest this week, this year is uh, one weekend. And I think that's great. It's kind of bringing the community back together for one weekend. Kind of did a spin off how Rogers Hometown Hockey last year was the one weekend thing. <coughs> so it's obviously the weekend of the February 27. And some of the things that they have uh, going is they're actually going to have one of those winter snow mazes, mm -hmm. and you might even have seen that down at the TRCC. They have the snowmobilers coming to do some stunts, um, and they have fireworks on Sunday night. They're going to have an outdoor stage, live entertainment. Uh, the Kinet or Kin Club is actually bringing back jam pail curling. Uh, I also believe there's still going to be some traditional activities for youth, 
and all the uh, information is on the thompson.ca website and there's posters around town so i really encourage the the city the community to come down there it's going to be a really great weekend i know dennis foley who's chair of the rec committee and uh, the recreation staff have been working really hard and it's going to be a really really great weekend really good for sure yeah it'll definitely be an exciting time in thompson with uh, lots to do um, before we end for today, was there anything else you'd like to mention? Um, just want to add uh, that, and I spoke to this at council the other night, that it's I Love to Read Month in the city. Mm -hmm. Some of us councillors uh, were reading in the schools, and I think it's a really good opportunity for us as adults to um, get our kids to put down their video games and just take a few minutes and, and read a book with your kids or grandkids or nieces and nephews or whatever. I think it's a good thing. For sure, and you actually uh, read at a school this Yeah, I read at grade four at Burntwood, read a hockey book because it was leading into Munt Cup. And the other thing I want to add is that, um, and we're going to continue to remind all the citizens that the census is taking place coming up in the spring, mm -hmm. and we really, really um, are going to talk about this lots because we have to encourage everybody in the city to do the census when you get it. it it's valuable dollars for us. Um, every that fills out the census it's money for us from the federal government mm -hmm. so please please we're going to do a lot of education and talk about it so uh, please spread the word and be aware of it and fill out the census because it's mm -hmm. definitely money in our and that we need yeah I, I, I talked to uh, Mayor Fenske about it last week but uh, he was explaining it affects because I know sometimes people don't really realize the effect mm -hmm. that it has on um, city budgets but it ends up affecting the money that you guys get from federal and provincial yeah. levels of government yeah it does it triggers down to per person so if you choose not to fill it out then we do not get any money for you mm -hmm. so it ends up costing us and I, th I think the numbers he would have said was probably close to 50 to 75 thousand per year yeah. that we missed out on if if somebody didn't yeah. so um, it's really important for people to do the census yeah. so please for spread sure. the word on that the other thing I want to add is um, a thank you to you. Um, I understand that you're leaving the city of Thompson. Yes. You've done a good job uh, with doing these uh, mayor beats. So we definitely, from the city of Thompson, wish you well in your, your new ventures out west. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And I've definitely enjoyed it. I was, uh, when uh, Fenske uh, thanked me as well last week, and I regretted that I didn't uh, sort of uh, thank more for the city, uh, all that uh, you guys have done. And uh, definitely Thompson will have a special place in my heart for sure moving forward. So good. I appreciate it. Well, that's it for this edition of City Beat. Make sure to join us every Thursday at around 1130 to find out what's happening around the city on City Hall. For 102.9 CHTM, I'm Monica Gould. Thanks, Monica. We have uh, on our...